This evening, we have 18 to become soldiers of Christ. And Almighty God, he knows that when we go into battle, we have to be prepared. I'm sure that all of us have seen soldiers, our military, especially those who are serving our country in, in combat. They have all sorts of gear, all sorts of gear to help them to be good soldiers. They have air protection so that when they shoot their rifles, they don't lose their hearing. But it's not only air protection, but they also can communicate with one another. Some of their helmets have these squares on them that give them night vision where they can see in the dark. Our soldiers have Kevlar vests, so if they get hit with a bullet, It'll basically stop the bullet, knock them down, but stop the bullet. They have extra ammunition on their belts. They have all sorts of very high-tech equipment to be good soldiers. Our Lord, when he instituted the seven sacraments, he knew that we also as soldiers, especially to be confirmed, we also need a number of things to help us to fight for our salvation. And we can call these the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. Just like a soldier, he needs night vision to see in the dark. He also he needs to be able to hear what's going on around him with his fellow soldiers and follow directions and commands. When we think of the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost, we think in general, these are infused habits with sanctifying grace to help us to know the will of God and to be able to do it. So what is the first gift of the Holy Ghost? Wisdom. The gift of wisdom helps us to esteem and appreciate the things of heaven. How can that as a soldier of Christ help us? Well, in many ways. Many of you are going to be out of school or you're out of school and you have the summer months ahead of you now. You have extra time. The gift of wisdom is going to help you to appreciate the things of heaven, spiritual things. Make sure you pray your morning prayers. Make sure you pray your night prayers. Make sure you pray your rosary. Go to confession regularly. The gift of wisdom is going to help us to remind ourselves how important it is that we pray and we put God first. So let's say you're out playing and you played all afternoon and into the evening time and you're tired. And you didn't pray a rosary yet. The gift of wisdom is going to say, make the time to pray your rosary. Choose heavenly things over earthly things. It could be perhaps that maybe there's a holy hour here at the Mount, but you'd rather be outside playing. Nothing wrong with playing. That's what kids do but we don't have to be playing all the time. The gift of wisdom is going to help us to say, you know, this is a little sacrifice, but I'm going to make go and make that holy hour. We also have the gift of understanding. The gift of understanding helps us to grasp, to truly understand, to, to truly grasp the truths of our faith. We understand them, and we can explain it to others as best we can. The gift of understanding helps us dealing with our precious Catholic faith. Somebody might come up to you and say, why do Catholics do this? Could be somebody in your neighborhood, could be a friend, maybe you have relatives who are not Catholic. I remember 
when I was a little boy wearing my brown scapular and it was sticking out. And some Protestant kid came up to me and said, what is that, a Bible? I said, does it look like a Bible? It's a scapular. What's that? It's something that Catholics wear to have protection from heaven. Oh, okay. The gift of knowledge. That helps us to use the things of this world for their proper end. We live in this world, we have to take care of ourselves, but we don't become too attached to these things. We use them because we have to live in this world, but we don't become so attached to them that it leads us away from God. Then we have the gift of counsel. What does God want me to do? Not just here and now, on a daily basis, daily basis, but also, what does God want me to do with my life? We have very important decisions to make, what my vocation is going to be. If I have a marriage vocation, one of the most important decisions I ever make in my life is who I get married to, because hopefully they're going to help me to get to heaven. If I have a vocation to become a priest or a sister or a brother, very important vocation. But that's one of the biggest decisions you can make in your life. You need the Holy Ghost and his gift of counsel to know his will. The gift of fortitude, that helps us to do the will of God. We're weak, and sometimes we're afraid, just like the apostles were. But the Holy Ghost will strengthen us to be able to overcome that temptation, carry that cross, make that sacrifice. We're weak, but it's an amazing thing what God's grace can do for all of us. I'll share an interesting story with you. I was just in St. Cloud, Minnesota last weekend for confirmation, and there was a booklet in the back. It was written by a very, very new parishioner. He just came from the modern Vatican II church, and he knows that something was wrong. He's elderly, but it's an amazing book because it tells all his stories of how he worked with people in Guatemala. Very fascinating book, short stories of how poor the people were down there. And it's an amazing thing because he's just one person, and the great work he did, the courage he had to have and afforded to was just amazing. But he begins his little book by saying, my mother asked me, he says, do you know why I named you David? He says, Mom, I don't have a clue. I named you after David in the Old Testament. And she told him the story about David facing Goliath. And after he heard the story, his mom said, Now, what do you think David was thinking when he faced Goliath? Oh, he must have been pretty scared. No, David thought, what a big target. And kind of reminded him, don't be afraid. God will help you. Now, this is the interesting thing. He spent 30 years down there working amongst these people, very, very poor. Sometimes it was not uncommon for every family in a village to lose a child to malnutrition. Very, very sad. And after 30 years... He went back to Minnesota and he invited his father to come down to see what he had done. He, he built a school down there and he tried to help the people out, he and his wife. And after he, his father went down there to see what he did, he brought his father back and his father says, come here, I have to show you something. And his father pulled out an old geography book. He asked David, do you remember this book? Yeah, I remember that book. When I was a little boy, I used to like to look at the pictures in the geography book. He said, do you remember what you did with this book? He said, no. He opened up the book. He said, you took a magic marker and you drew a circle on one of these pages. And he said, I don't remember that at all. That was like 60 years ago. His father said, 
I told you not to make any marks in the book after you did that. Don't do that anymore. But he said, when I was going to go visit you down in Guatemala, I opened up that geography book and I was absolutely stunned because you circled the very page of Guatemala and it was a picture of one of the regions of Guatemala. Look closely. When he was like seven or eight years old, he made a magic marker circle in the book. And that is where, later on in life, he spent 30 years of his life on that very location. How do you explain that? But God certainly had a plan for him. You know, God has a plan for all of us. The very hairs of our head are numbered. And sometimes to fulfill that plan, we have to be strong real strong, because sometimes God asks us to do things that are hard. Over by Brother Joseph, there's the statue of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. And I'm not sure if any of you girls are going to take St. Francis Xavier Cabrini as a confirmation sponsor or a spouse or name, but the interesting thing about her was when she was a little girl, she almost drowned. So she was terribly afraid of water. Couldn't go near water. Just go near water and just kind of lock up. God, I can't be around water. And when she got older, she went to Pope Leo XIII and says, I want to be a missionary. And she founded the missionary sisters. But she was sent where the Pope said, you're most needed. You have to go to the United States. Go to America. That would mean that she'd have to cross the Atlantic Ocean, many, many times. In fact, 17 times. And she was very, very, very afraid of water. So sometimes the saints were challenged very hard, but that's how they showed their love for God. They were willing, with God's grace, to overcome their fears and to mount those difficulties to do God's will. Remember, the Holy Ghost, when you're confirmed, is going to strengthen you to do the will of God. We also have the gift of piety. That helps us to look upon God as our loving Father, and indeed he is. And lastly, the gift of fear. We don't want to offend such a good and loving Father in heaven. But as soldiers of Christ, you have all these weapons at your disposal, the gifts of the Holy Ghost, to help you to know and to do God's will because it is a battle for our salvation. You know the devil, he never sleeps. He doesn't need an alarm clock. He's up all the time, waiting for that opportunity to lead us into temptation and sin. The devil's very smart. He's clever. And the devil knows that because of original sin, we have an inclination to sin. And the devil will sometimes tempt us to put ourselves in occasions of sin. And we also know, too, the devil uses many things of the world to lead us away from God. So it's very important as you become soldiers of Christ, use the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Try to know God's will in your life and always try to do it. You know, when we give you confirmation, we're going to impose our hand on top of your head. And then we're going to anoint your forehead with the sign of the cross with chrism. The chrism we blessed on Holy Thursday, it's a mixture of olive oil and balsam. The olive oil signifies the strengthening. The balsam is a very sweet, very sweet liquid, but very sticky. But that balsam represents the sweet odor of a good Catholic life. After we confirm you, we give you a slight slap on the cheek to remind you to be ready to suffer as a soldier of Christ. What a special day this is to be confirmed and become a soldier of Christ. And as you become soldiers of Christ, be determined. Keep God's commandments. Don't put yourself in any occasions of sin. Pray your prayers every day, especially in time of temptation. And also remember to receive the sacraments. That's where you're going to get strength of soul. Of all the things you need to do in life, there's only one thing that really matters. To know and to love and to serve God and to get to heaven. Everything else is all secondary. Important, but not ultimately important. If you get to heaven, your life is going to be a complete success. 
Now, all of you have different names of saints that you've chosen. Remember, those are your special patrons. You try to imitate their holy lives and also pray to them for their intercession that they would pray for you before the throne of God. So on this very special day, we congratulate all of you on your confirmation. Very, very special day. But let this be a new beginning for all of you, soldiers of Christ, fighting the battle for our salvation and the salvation of others. Those of you who are sponsors, please remember, as we're anointing the forehead and imposing our hand, please put your right hand on the right shoulder. And remember, as sponsors, you become like a spiritual parent to those who are confirmed. Pray for them. Exhort them to the practice of their faith. That's the reason why we have sponsors. I'd also like just to say a few words very briefly about the feast of Our Lady today, the Queenship of Our Blessed Mother. Our Blessed Mother was crowned Queen of Heaven and Earth, and indeed she is. She's the Mother of God. But as the Mother of God, Our Blessed Mother, we think of her humility, her obedience to the will of God, her charity, her love of God. But there is one virtue that I'd like to just kind of say we should never forget, and that's Mary's generosity. Our Blessed Mother had such a generous soul. God told her the will of God. What was her response? Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. She was told her cousin Elizabeth was with child. She went with haste. At the wedding feast of Cana, they're running out of wine. It's going to embarrass the bride and groom. She goes and asks Jesus to intervene, and Jesus changes water into wine. Our Blessed Mother was so, so, so generous because she loved God. And when you love somebody, there isn't a sacrifice too big There isn't a cross too heavy to carry. You want to prove your love for them. And indeed, our Blessed Mother, of all creatures that walked us worth, she was so loyal to God and so generous in her service of God. And that's what I'd like to share with all of us here. We all want to show we love God. We say it when we pray our prayers, but let's also try to prove it after the imitation of our Blessed Mother, who is now reigning as queen of heaven and earth next to the throne of her divine son. Our blessed mother was so generous of of soul and heart. And when we serve God with generosity, remember, God's going to reward us for everything we do. All the acts of kindness, charity, obedience, all the virtues that we try to practice, all the temptations we overcome, all the crosses we carry, if we do it generously, God's going to know that. He's going to reward us. So when we think of Our Lady's queenship, God has so generously rewarded her because Our Lady has so generously loved and served and known God. So on this feast of Our Lady's queenship, let's ask Our Lady to help us all be generous and let us not ever forget two words. Our Lady said fiat. When God's will comes known to us, even if it's hard, say fiat. Let it be done. And in all of our life's happenings, let us remember as Catholics, we've been so blessed by God with the true mass and sacraments and the true Catholic faith. There should be a joy and a happiness in our heart that we have so many graces at our disposal. We have the gift of the true faith, and that should make us want to sing every day, Magnificat, my soul magnifies God. Thank you, God. You've been so good to me. Two simple words, fiat and magnificat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.